Hello to my COM 2200 students in ITMG. This is lecture video four. The topic is job interviews, uh, one of my favorite subjects. Good to see you all here. Here's our outline for today's lecture, or this week's lecture. Uh, we'll have an intro to interviews. Then we'll have three sections before the interview, during the interview, and after the interview. And then I'll talk about some upcoming work that you will be doing for this course. I want you to take note of the lecture format. So there's two ways you can do this lecture or, or listen to this lecture. And first of all, you need a pen and a paper or pencil and paper. And your two options are a solo. So listen alone, keep a pen and paper nearby. I will ask you to pause sometimes to brainstorm some ideas just to increase your level of engagement with it. Uh, the second option B is the buddy system. So find a friend or a classmate, sit next to each other or uh, communicate by messenger and press play at the same time on the video. So you're both watching the video simultaneously. Uh, then when you pause, I'd like you to brainstorm together and compare your lists on these brainstorms, which are coming up soon. The intro to this lecture is very general, and I'm going to ask you a pretty simple question, and that is, um, in a minute, uh, before the question, the point I want to drive home here is that hard skills qualify you to do the job, and soft skills will get you hired. So I'm going to say that again. Hard skills qualify you to do the job. For example, your technical skills, right? your hard skills. And soft skills will get you hired. That's the interview. The interview is a soft skill. So your communication ability in the interview will get you hired. So your ability to communicate about what you can do is equally important to your ability to do it. Now, this is the case when you are job hunting because all you have is your ability to communicate about what you can do. So this is just as important as your ability to actually do it. So keep this in mind. Uh, even though you may have the technical hard skills, it's not worth much if you can't talk about it. So that's what we're trying to drill in here and focus on. And if you can't present yourself as the type of person who's hireable, teachable, trainable, then you might not have luck getting a job. So that's what we're doing here. Now we're gonna to move to that first question and I'd like everybody to get a pen and paper. And the question is, what kind of person would you want to be around 40 hours a week at work. Honestly, what sort of qualities? Things could be kind, patient, competent, professional, things like that. Anything that comes to mind. So I want you to get a timer, take a minute, and see if you can quickly write five to ten of these answers. So we're going to go to the next slide. I'm going to disappear. I want you to pause the video and get a timer for one minute See how many you can write, and then we will start again. All right, welcome back. Now, I want you to look at the list, and when I asked my other classes to do this, they had answers similar to what I already said. Competent, professional, punctual, intelligent, confident, kind, compassionate, patient, understanding, friendly, fun. My question for you is, when you look at your list, do you have these qualities? And I want you to be honest. Right? And if you do have these qualities, how can you prove that during an interview? How can you demonstrate that during an interview? So that's your job, right? Whatever are those qualities that you think are most important to bring to work, your job in the interview is to demonstrate that you do indeed have those. And that could be through your behavior and, of course, through your answers, which ideally can involve examples, specific examples of how you demonstrate these qualities or have demonstrated them in the past, either in your work or in your education. Now, we're going to go to brainstorm question number two. And this is about success in an interview. So when in a job interview, what are the most important factors for success? Possible answers for these could be things like being on time, uh, answering honestly, dressing well, 
whatever comes to mind. So again, I'm going to ask you to get your timer, set it for one minute, get a pen and paper, and see how many you can write in one minute. So again, please press pause, and I'll come back. All right, I hope you're all done after one minute. So let's move on. So what are we doing with that list? The reason I had you write that list is as you listen to this video where we discuss success in interviews, I want you to keep the list next to you and I want you to compare it to the lecture. See if there's any similarities. If you do notice similarities, I want you to give yourself a check mark because that means, great, you've already got it. Right? You already knew part of the lecture. And again, this is going to increase your engagement with the material and hopefully help in your retention and your learning. Let's move on. So the first section here is before the interview. So what can you do before the interview? Now, the interview um, often can consist of multiple phases. So there could be the invitation to interview. That could be by text message, phone, email. There might be a phone screening, so kind of a phone interview. Then a first interview of 30 to 40 minutes, and maybe a second or third interview. It could be from one hour all the way all the way to a day long. And often the higher level position, the uh, more extensive the interview process. Now, how can you prepare? So before that interview, you want to make sure that you don't get disqualified before the interview happens. So I want you to be honest. If I were to go look at your Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Facebook profile, would I find anything that would be mm, maybe not quite uh, ideal, uh, not something you'd want in front of a potential boss? So have a look and make sure that you've got that stuff looking acceptable. For, you know, for whatever's public facing, maybe you have to uh, change your settings. Uh, also, make sure you have a nice, polite voicemail recording in case they call and miss you. And when you get invited for the interview, it's also a good time to notify your references that they might be getting contacted. Another good move before the interview is to research the employer. So you want to learn as much as you can about this company. Also, you know, look at the job posting again, get clear on what they're looking for. Prepare your elevator pitch. So this is a one minute summary of why you're great fit for the job. You wanna prepare questions to ask at the interview and also practice answering aloud, out loud. We'll go into some of these a little bit more later. Now, as far as this elevator pitch, let's go to the next slide and go in a little more detail. So what is this? Imagine you're in an elevator and you've got one minute to convince someone to give you the job. In that one minute, you want to talk about your uh, summary, your education, experience, your skills, your traits, and your goal with this job or your career. So can you do that in one minute? That's the challenge. So I recommend you write that down, practice speaking it, not necessarily because you're trying to memorize a script, but possibly because you're trying to get clear yourself on why you're the right fit for the job. And if you're clear yourself, then when you're in the interview, that confidence and comfort and authenticity is going to come through in the way you talk about that job and yourself. Let's keep going. Another great tip is to rehearse common questions. So. Here's a list of common challenging questions, stuff like, you know, why do you want to work for us? Uh, do you prefer to work by yourself or with others? My recommendation is try to write some answers for these questions and see what comes out and then practice speaking them. Maybe with a partner, maybe you record yourself, maybe just in the mirror. But the point is the more practice you give and thought you put into these answers, the more natural and confident you will seem when you're in the interview. And that's the whole point. The next slide just has a pen and it says use it. Now the reason I'm saying use the pen, it, it just means think. Do the hard work to think about your answers to interview questions so that when you're actually in that interview, you know you've gone through the thinking and again, that authenticity will come out. 
Now we can move to during the interview. Now, I've read some studies that suggest 30% of interviewers make up their mind in the first five minutes of an interview and then spend the rest of the interview trying to confirm that. Now, whether or not this is true or really provable, I think we can all agree that first impressions are important. So how can we maximize those first five minutes in the interview? How can we start strong? Well, I think key words would be connect, build rapport, bring energy and enthusiasm, smile, want to be there, and thank them for their time. Now moving on, some of you will be in a video interview or a Zoom interview. Now this may be the case for many of you if, if it's still COVID. I want to encourage you to arrive early to that, 15 minutes early, to check the video and audio, confirm those settings are okay, make sure you're in a quiet place, and make sure you're dressed appropriately, maybe business casual. Now, if you're in an in-person interview or Zoom, um, an interview will typically follow these stages. So we've got this uh, handshake hello, an intro and building rapport, some general questions leading into some more specific questions, uh, and then you finally ask questions for them, followed by a handshake goodbye. I have a little asterisk or star next to handshake because of course these days we are not really shaking hands. Now this five point greeting is maybe common sense but maybe not and the point is when we're in an interview or a situation where we're nervous sometimes we forget the basics so it's a good reminder to smile, make eye contact, Use the interviewer's name, uh, tell them it's nice to meet them, and of course shake hands. And we have this little X around shaking hands. So these days maybe it's a fist bump or a, an elbow bump or a wave or a prayer hands, uh, whatever it may be. Follow the interviewer's lead to um, make sure you're just matching them in tone and formality. Let's move to answering questions. Now, some basic tips for answering. Of course, we wanna answer in complete sentences. We wanna give evidence and examples for our claims. We wanna quantify things when possible. Give numbers, you know, if you can quantify your answers with numbers, that's helpful, just like in the resume and cover letter. And please remember, each question is an opportunity to demonstrate why you are the right candidate for the job. So. Even though you can answer in one, two, three words, give short answers, we want to try to give more than that. So short answer is fine to start with, but then give some evidence or examples to support that answer. Now one method for answering is called the STAR method. So STAR is an acronym that stands for Situation, Task, Action, Result. I'm not gonna read this sample question and answer, but I do encourage you to pause the video and read this sample answer to understand this. So essentially situation is you explain when and where something happened. Task, you, you explain uh, what you were all working on. The action is what you specifically did, and the result is then that outcome. So that's a good way to add some structure to your answers and make sure you're answering thoroughly whenever possible. Let's move on to something very important that we all are doing all the time, whether we know it or not, is body language. Now, what does your body language say about you? As we can see by this gentleman in the picture, he doesn't look all that interested in getting this job. So I want you to check in with your body language right now and think, how is your body language right now? Would you sit this way in an interview? How would you change it, if any, if, if at all? So the key is just manage your body language. Be aware of it, you know, and generally, of course, sit up, be attentive, make eye contact. A thing to be aware of with body language is crutches. So I have a picture of these crutches here, just as a reminder, and there's different kinds of crutches. Now, a crutch is something you lean on. Of course. Now, there's different kinds of crutches. There's verbal, these are filler words like like, um, you know. There's also 
uh, physical crutches, like playing with your hands, fiddling with things. These are things to just simply be aware of. And we don't want to look nervous and we don't want to distract the interviewer from what we're saying. So sim simply be aware of if you have crutches and these might come out while you practice. Now we'll move on to difficult questions. Now I have some examples of difficult questions here. You know, the classics, what's your biggest weakness? What causes you to become angry? Uh, who is the toughest boss you ever had worked for? Now, what we want to do is use challenging questions as an opportunity to demonstrate our commitment to growth and development. So if we had a weakness, for example, motivation or concentration or confidence, we can explain how we've had this weakness, but we've identified it. So that shows our self-awareness. And then we made a plan to try to overcome that. So that shows we are solution focused and committed to our growth. So one way to do that is to think about something you identified in the past, you made a change to it, so now you behave in a different way and in the future going forward, you're gonna to continue to work on that. So that's a way to change a difficult question into an opportunity to demonstrate your development. Let's move on to this very tricky situation, which is what if you don't know the answer, right? They ask you something and you just don't know. This happens, of course. Now, the quick answer is buy time. Right? Try to buy time. So how can you buy time? I've got three suggestions for you here. Uh, the three suggestions are, of course, ask for a moment. It's perfectly fine to say, that's a good question. Could you give me a moment to think about it? Even while you're saying that, your brain is gonna be doing the work. We've all got big brains and they're capable of a lot more than we know when we're under pressure, especially. So even just five or 10 extra seconds can sometimes help us answer. Two, you wanna clarify the question, right? So that could be restating the question, something like, uh, what I heard you ask was this, is, is that right? Or could you please rephrase the question? Or is this the question you were asking and restate the question? Just buys you, you know, five, 10 seconds. Another tip is to take a sip. It's amazing how much thinking can happen in uh, six seconds through uh, taking a sip of water. Or coffee might be even uh, more effective for that. All right, so we'll move on to near the end of the interview. It's your turn for you to ask them questions. Remember, you're interviewing them also to decide if you want to work there. This is when you can ask important stuff like what's the company culture like or what's your favorite thing about working for the company? I have a list of questions here. I'm not going to read them all, but you can pause them and take notes if you wish. Asking good questions also demonstrates your authentic interest in working there. When you come to the end of the interview, again, you can use that five point goodbye in this case. So just the basics, of course, uh, people often remember the, the first impression and the last impression, especially. So a smile, eye contact, use their name, <clears throat> tell them it's a pleasure to meet them, thank them, and of course a handshake or a fist bump, whatever they, however they wanna say goodbye. Just match whatever they do. Now we've come to after the interview, just a couple more points here. And first of all, take some notes. What did you learn from the interview? Every interview is an opportunity for you to learn and develop. Second, send them a brief thank you. So this could be an email, um, keep it short and polite, but it's one more signal that you are indeed interested in this position. Now, my last slide here is just about my personal opinion on a couple of issues with interviewing. And one would be before the interview, sit quietly and reflect and get clear on your real selling points, your real strengths and why you're a good fit for this job. You know, take five minutes alone and just really think about that. Uh, second, write answers to that and, and write answers to some common questions. So doing the work to think through the real content of your answer, 
will make it sound more authentic when it's coming out. Now this doesn't mean you memorize a script, but it means the answers are there inside of you. Number three, practice out loud. So simply forcing your mouth to go through the paces to articulate these ideas uh, will make you more comfortable during the interview. And four, manage your body language. So connect, be respectful, build rapport, engage, show them you're the kind of, kind of person that they'd like to be around 40 hours a week.